It's a sermon that will go without interruption. I will not be taking questions uh, for two reasons. One, I consider what I'm about to say absolutely non-negotiable. I don't think it's a subject of debate, and I wanted to have the absolute moral clarity of my voice and my voice alone. This is a rabbi speaking from your pulpit to our congregation. It is also a repetition of things that I have already said many times, including major moments such as high holiday addresses, including this past fall. The basic concept which I'll be addressing today is the law of the land is Torah law. Din de malchut dinhu. I've taught this many times and you know it well. If there is a civil law that does not break a Torah law, that civil law has the force of Torah law. You must follow it. It is a moral and ethical imperative taught by our religion for you to be an upstanding member of civil society. That is non-negotiable. There is no gray zone. It's not subject to debate. And I don't care who you are. I'll speak today about the events of January 6, 2021, a day of national shame. I will do it from two points of view. Law and order should sound familiar to you, as that was day one of Rosh Hashanah. And the rise of anti-Semitic white extremism in this country, which should sound familiar to you since it was Rosh Hashanah last year. These are not new topics. It is not my role to give a complete picture or a political roadmap for your future. It is my role, however, to speak to the morality and the ethics of law. It is my role to speak of the threat that anti-Semitism poses to this nation and to each of you and your children and your grandchildren. By choosing these topics, I'm limiting my voice, not expanding my voice. I'm not twisting some political agenda. On the High Holy Days, I spoke forcefully of law and order, while supporting the rule of law and those who serve to enforce it is a core Jewish value commanded in the Torah. On this past Wednesday, the Save America rally, as it was called, at that assembly, they were all urged by multiple speakers to stop the constitutional process in the Congress that day. They were urged to stop the rule of law. We have the right of free speech within the rule of law. We have the right of political advocacy within the rule of law. We have the right for fair trial and to petition government to make our case to executive and judicial branches for the redress of perceived wrongs. And all of this was done extensively following Donald Trump's loss in the November election of last fall. And I vocally, and in writing, repeatedly supported his rights and his followers' rights to pursue legal avenues of redress. The facts were not proven on his side. The courts ruled on the law. He lost his appeals. This is not subject to debate. These are facts. When you lose an election, you have lost. When you lose in court, you have lost. You do not have the rule of law on your side to continue to act against the rule of the court, the rule of law. But political freedom is the bedrock of our society and important. And so you can protest your viewpoint freely, vociferously, verbally, and peacefully. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Some people forget it is law. It is not procedure, it is not structure, it is actual law, the supreme law. No law of any state supersedes the Constitution. Once the states had certified their electors by constitutional law, the electors voted. And once those electors in the states had voted by constitutional law, they were certified by their states. That is the end of the electoral process by law with the single constitutional mandate for the Congress to meet to count and verify the certifications. They must, under force of law, do so on January 6th. Any deliberate interference with that act is against the law. Definition, insurrection, 
the deliberate interference with the legitimate exercise of governmental authority. When you stop someone from exercising their legitimate governmental authority, that is called insurrection. If you do it with a weapon, it's called rebellion. Okay, this insurrection is the unarmed, deliberate attempt to thwart legitimate authority from exercising their duty. Okay, any deliberate interference with that act is against the law. It doesn't matter if you feel or believe that the court was wrong. No one is above the law. An essential point of my high holiday service was the establishment of judges and police enforcers. Our chief enforcer is the president. And what do you do in Jewish law if that person does not follow the law? Take a King David and a King Saul, two important examples for Jews to use to establish their moral and religious view of authority gone wrong. Saul and David both broke the law. Saul was unrepentant and disturbed in the end of his kingship. He was paranoid and acted out against the good of the nation, unrepentant and imbalanced. Saul was removed from the throne. David tried to cover up his crimes was revealed in public, admitted his wrongs, did teshuva, paid a severe price, and continued on the throne as king to the end of his days, achieving further great things. The difference between David and Saul is clear. Acknowledgement of wrongdoing, repentance, and acceptance of consequence. That is the Jewish view of the ruler in abrogation of the law. That is also not subject to debate. Those are facts. That is what the Torah says. So this is clear. President Trump himself said out loud, I spent a long time going through every speech at that rally, watched every minute of them all. President Trump himself said out loud, before the insurrection, to the people he had worked for weeks to invite and gather explicitly to that place with the cause of saving America, title of the rally, he told them that he wanted the crowd to go to the Capitol, and he told them why, to pressure the Congress to stop it's like legal ministerial duty of counting the electoral college. And he and his lawyer repeatedly tried during the day to influence legislators to break that law, to not count, to, as he said on the stage, send it back to the states, unquote, so that he would be president again, unquote. He said, we will be president again, and you will be very happy people. That's what he said. So he said on January 6th that his goal was to be president again. His plan was for those people to disrupt the Congress, to make the Congress break their duty under law, to send it back to the states, for some mechanism that he had planned by which he would become president again, contrary to the rule of law. His plan was contrary to the rule of law. His goal was contrary to the rule of law. And he implemented the plan. These are facts. Right? That's non-negotiable. He said it. He did it. It happened. We watched it. All right, on January 5th, I support his right to say anything. On January 7th, I believe he has a constitutional right to say anything. But on January 6th, he has to bow before the rule of law 
the constitutional authority and mandate of that day, and he did not. And all by itself, that is a betrayal of his sworn oath to uphold and protect the Constitution. That is also non-negotiable. That is a fact. Now, now, as for what actually happened, we all agree. No democratically-minded citizen can tolerate the riot and the insurrection. We are now talking about, and I want you to be very clear, I understand this. We are now talking about a specific subset of the protesters. And that subset are the rioters. The rioters are the ones who engaged in illegal assembly to disturb the peace. So anybody who went past or threw a broken barricade up onto the steps where they were not allowed to be, that's the riot. Then there were the people, a subsect of the rioters, who smashed the windows, broke the doors, killed and murdered a police officer, harming dozens of others, destroyed property, rampaged inside the building, seeking out the leaders of the House and the Senate with the purpose of doing exactly what the plan was, stopping their function under the Constitution with the purpose of putting President Trump back in office. That was what they say they were doing, and that's what we saw them doing. Those are facts. That's non-negotiable. That is insurrection. I'm willing to say, from my understanding, everybody inside the building is involved in insurrection. We know that in that group, the primary driving force of most of the insurrectionists is extreme ideology. Okay? We know that they don't represent the Trump nation. We know that there are not 75 million insurrectionists in the country. That is not who we are as a country. But this group of people, white supremacists, and many, many anti-Semites among them, the hate of Nazi and white supremacist bigots was all over that riot and was all over the front of the violence of the insurrection. Flags, hats, t-shirts, and more. Six million wasn't enough. Was a uniform shirt worn by a whole group of people. Camp Auschwitz and more. Their online movements brought hundreds and hundreds all told, and they have always seen the Trump banner as their greatest hope in modern America. They are hateful, bigoted, violent, and dangerous, and that's not new from this pulpit either. And we have long shown that they are empowered by Trump rhetoric, whether or not he intends it. We are all responsible for the impact of our words. We are all responsible for our tolerance of what is done in our name. The ADL and the Southern Poverty Law Center and more have tracked, identified these people in these groups. I have pushed that information out to this congregation. We even had an article in the bulletin every month for a year tracking these kinds of things in New Jersey. They are known, they are predictable. The anti-Semitism under QAnon and other conspiracy theories are inevitable ever since the publishing of the horrific lie, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Behind every dark fantasy of a deep state lies an anti-Semitic group that says the Jews are in power, the Jews are the enemy, the Jews are to blame. Not all of the insurrectionists were anti-Semites. Some were Jews, but so stupid and so deluded that they could attack the Capitol building arm in arm with anti-Semites who hate them. Every person who passed the barricade and climbed the steps is guilty of riot. Every person who entered the building is guilty of insurrection. Every person who planned published and encouraged those acts is guilty of incitement, and we have laws for each of those categories. 
Once again, we see police attacked, one murdered in the name of political violence. As I did last summer, it is wrong always and everywhere. Support the legitimate political views of freedom. Stop, condemn, and prosecute violence. Pursue justice, condemn extremism, violence, and anti-Semitism. Hold all those, all those at every level who actively sought to thwart the Constitution to account. King David was told that he had to carry a Torah scroll with him. By Torah law, the king must carry a Torah scroll with him and read from it every day. Not because the king is Torah, but because the Torah is king. The land of the law is Torah law. May it be upheld in our day. Shabbat Shalom. Page 155. Please rise.